Okay. Next up, we're going to talk interval notation. Okay. So intervals are kind of standard subsets of the real numbers, and they pop up all over the place in calculus. All right. Um, maybe you're writing at an interval because it's the solution to an inequality. Maybe you're writing at an interval because it's the domain of a function, right? Uh, probably the most common scenario where you're going to be writing down intervals is you're getting towards the material on, let's say, curve sketching, right? You're looking at how derivatives shape the graph. And you want to know things like, where is the derivative increasing? Where, or sorry, where is the derivative positive? Where is it negative? That tells you where a function is increasing or decreasing, right? And, and the way you specify this is, is using intervals. So you'll give an interval, say, well, it's, it's positive on this interval, it's negative on this other interval, right? So basically, you break the real number line into these pieces. Each of those pieces is going to be an interval, and on those intervals, something interesting is happening to your function, okay? <coughs> so there are a number of different types of intervals. And there's different notation used for each, and that might be some of what throws people off. Um, so the basic types are the open interval, which is written like this. And the closed interval. And instead of using parentheses, we use square brackets, okay? So what are these numbers, right? So in, in all of these here, assume that A is a smaller number than B, right? Um, the, these are referred to as the left endpoint and the right endpoint of the interval. The left endpoint is always smaller than the right endpoint, right? Because we always kind of increase as we move from left to right in the real numbers. So an open interval, is, as an inequality, if you like, we could write it like this as a set. So it would be the set of all real numbers x that satisfy the following inequality. x has to be bigger than a, but smaller than b. Okay. For the closed interval, it's almost the same. There is one small but important difference, which is that the less than signs become less than or equal. Okay? So the difference between the two is that the closed interval, the, as a set, it includes these two endpoints. right? A and B are elements of this set. They belong to the set. Whereas for the open interval, they don't. right? So every number that's in between no matter how close you get to A, anything that's big, bigger than A, no matter how close, is in the set. Anything that's smaller than B, no matter how close to B, is in the set. But A and B themselves are not. Okay? You can also depict this using a, using a number line. So if we have our real numbers here, and let's say A is there and B is there. So we want to indicate that we're, we've got everything in between. So we might color that part in. Actually, let's get some better contrast. So we color it in like so, OK? Um, and then we use these kind of hollow circles at those two points to indicate that the A and B are not included, OK? For a closed interval, you kind of start the same. Mark off A, you mark off B. But this time, to indicate that you're including those points, you put a solid dot. So you fill it in. And you fill in all the points in between. Okay? So those are the two most basic types of intervals, open and closed. Um, but you can also kind of mash these up, right? There are, there are several ones that you might refer to as the half open intervals, okay? So these are going to be ones that look like, say, A, B. So that would mean that you're including the left endpoint, but not the right endpoint. Or you could do it the other way. A, 
and then B, right? So you're including the right endpoint, but not the left, okay? So these, these are the half open integrals. Um, these four together are the four types of bounded intervals, okay? These are the ones that they don't go on forever. In either direction, at some point, you stop, right? And once you go beyond that point, you're not in the interval anymore. Um, but there are also a number of so-called infinite intervals, okay? And these, there's a number of these. So we could do like this, a to infinity with a close bracket on the a. We can do a to infinity with a round bracket on the a, okay? As you might expect, these are going to be all the real numbers x, which are, so just like here, we want x to be bigger than or equal to a, but there's no upper limit, right? There's no restriction here on how big x can get. So we are just going to say that x has to be bigger than or equal to a. Similarly here, we can just say that x is strictly greater than a, right? So here, it's bigger than a or possibly equal. Here, just strictly bigger, right? Not including, right? We also want to include the possibility that x might be less than a certain number. So we could also have, and here we use minus infinity, right? So we always think of kind of minus infinities at this end of the number line, plus infinities at the other end. So we can go from infinity to say b, or minus infinity rather, up to b. And again, we can do either closed or open for those. You know exactly what's coming here. All right, so that's gonna be all the real numbers x, where x is less than or equal to b, or strictly less than b. Okay. There's, there's one last type of interval that you might see, which is that you don't put any limits at all. So you just go from minus infinity all the way to infinity. And a simpler way to write that down is to simply say, well, you know what? That's all the real numbers, so let's just write R.